says, for it is the power of of God, the word of God, the gospel is the power of God. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what redeemed man from sin, sickness, pain, death, suffering. It says it's the power of God. That word deutimus, that Greek word is deutimus. It means miraculous, supernatural power of God. That's how God can take a broken man or a broken woman and he can bring them out of their sinful lifestyle. He can bring them out of their addictions. He can set them free. Hello again, this is Ken Turner from Milford, Ohio. We're going to talk about faith. Faith, faith, faith is what we're going to talk about. Mark eleven twenty two. Through 24, Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Mark 11, 22, have faith in God. This, this word have there means to hold or possess, to be accompanied with, to acknowledge, to have experience with. So to have faith in God is to hold, to possess, to accompany, to acknowledge, and to have experience. Experiences in our lives give us the faith we need, the faithfulness. Anybody ever drove across the bridge? You have to have a certain amount of faith. Or that bridge is going to hold you up. You know, there is a a value to having faith and to possess and to hold and allow faith to accompany you and to acknowledge to have that you have faith in God, to experience it. It's so powerful to have faith in God, to hold, to possess, to allow it to accompany you, to acknowledge it, that you have experienced it. That word faith is a pledge, a proof to have confidence in, assurance in, to trust, and actually to be hungry for, to be hungry for God. When you have a problem in your life, you have a difficulty in your life, you have a mountain in your way, have faith in God. Hold on to the knowledge and experience that you've had with God moving on your behalf. And that is faith to hold on to that, have confidence, assurance, be hungry for it. God, I need more faith in you. The word God there, I am that I am. I am, I'm the self-existent one. I am the eternal one who has always been and always will be there. Have faith in God. Psalms 90 and 2, before the foundations were brought Forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are the self-existence, the eternal one that has always been there and always be, be there for us. Have faith in God. I can't stress this enough. We're going to look some more here. Romans chapter 1 verse 14 through 17. I am no un, under no obligation. This is Paul speaking. I am under no obligation both to the Greeks or to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. And I'm just going to share a second here. It's it. God put me on the YouTube. He told me, he spoke to me, he dealt with me for over a year before I came on here. And I am eager to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ came. He came to set the captives free. And that is the faith that I have in God. I'm not in any obligation 
obligation for to any individual group. I want to see all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, that God sent his son, that we may be set free from death, from hell, from bondages, from sickness, from addictions, from pain and suffering. God is there to set us free. And I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel and what I believe because the gospel is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He says, I am the door. Anybody's not. Let him in. Let Jesus Christ in. And this scripture goes on down. It says, for it is the power of of God, the word of God, the gospel is the power of God. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what redeemed man from sin, sickness, pain, death, suffering. It says it's the power of God. That word deutimus, that's Greek word is deutimus. It means miraculous, supernatural power of God. That's how God can take a broken man or a broken woman and he can bring them out of their sinful lifestyle. He can bring them out of their addictions. He can set them free. You know, I used to work at a teen challenge, a drug and alcohol rehab, Christian base. The guy told me, he says, man, I'm sitting in a crack house. We're doing crack. He said, there's a Bible laying there. He said, I grabbed that Bible for some reason. He said, I don't even know why. Picked that thing up and started reading. And God spoke to me right there. And God brought him out of the crack house. God can do that for you right now. Any type of addiction, any kind of bondage that you're in, the un the the sinful lifestyles, the depression, the the suicidal tendencies and thought, God can set you free. It says, for it is the power of God for salvation. Salvation is deliverance and preservation of life. God, salvation brings us back into a right relationship with God through the power and blood of Jesus Christ. It says to everyone who believes that word believe there in the scripture means to trust and commit yourself to God. In other words, you have to have some type of desire in your heart to trust and commit yourself to God. We have a lot of people that fill churches today. We have a lot of people in the world today that say they love God or they know God. And there's a lot of people out there. You know, I talked to one guy, he was a Mormon. He said, well, I'm, I'm religious. I'm religious. Religion has nothing to do with it. There's a lot of dead religion in this world. We must come into alignment with God. We must come to a place that and allow the power of God for salvation to deliver us, to set us free. I don't just have some type of religion. I am not just affiliated with some kind of denomination. I have been set free free by the power of God. And I am eager, eager to preach the gospel, to help people and pray three people through, to be set free in Jesus Christ. He says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It says in verse 17 here in Romans chapter one, verse 17 says, for in it, the righteousness of God in it, in the righteousness of God is revealed. God reveals. He reveals. He makes things known to us. He uncovers things to us and he brings us into a right standing. That's what that is. Righteousness of God is a right standing. We cannot be clean. We cannot be delivered without the righteousness of God working 
in and through our life. We must allow God to bring us to a right standing, to deliver and set us free. We got to be willing to come to him and just lay ourselves bare before him. And he, it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. I know that I know I am not ashamed of the gospel because I know that I know that he has delivered me. He has set me free. It says the righteous shall live by faith. That means the right standing shall live life, their life by and through confidence and trust in God that they've been persuaded to live live this way. The influence of God is now upon their life and God desires for us to walk in this faith through the deutimous power of God for salvation. He says, you can walk by faith. He says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Love you all. Don't forget if you're enjoying this, subscribe to my channel. And if you're enjoying this, also give me a thumbs up. Make comments on my, on my site. Let me know what you think, what you love, and how God has spoke to your life. Give me some testimonies of what God's done in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you.